Hey everybody, Tom Barnish, Chicago Scene at the Insect Asylum here in the Avondale neighborhood. I'm right off of Milwaukee Avenue in the corridor, the heart of the Avondale neighborhood, right where it meets Logan Square. And the Insect Asylum opened up by Nina Salem, who was the kid playing in the dirt when she was a kid. And now she's got her own brick and mortar store right here in Chicago. It's more than just a museum. It's an educational center, an art gallery. They serve tea. They even have souvenirs, the whole thing. You can buy insects. You can see insects that are from hundred years ago, even a stuffed dress. I mean, they have everything in here. Truly a unique place. I'm happy to tell this story. That is the Chicago scene today here at the Insect Asylum. Check that out. Those are specimens here at the Insect Asylum here in the Logan Square, Avondale area where they kind of all meet together and is the brainchild of Nina Salem, who is in charge of this new sp wonderful space. How are you, Nina? I'm fantastic. How are you today? Doing great. I've never seen anything quite like this space. There's more than just, uh, it's not just a museum. It's not just an art gallery. It's not just an educational space. It's everything all together because you were telling me off camera, you don't like to be put into a, baby doesn't like to be put into a corner, so yeah. to speak. So you like to do everything. I'm quoting Dirty Dancing there for everybody who doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I want this to be a space for people to come and explore and learn. And so if somebody has something that they want to do and that they're interested in, this is the place to be. This is where we're at. If you want to do an experience or a class or um, just grow a community, we want to be the place that gives you that space to do so. And you have these wonderful specimens that you right here we, we just started with where the people have sent them to you you've collected them over the years in these envelopes you take them up in what you call pinning them and they're on display here throughout the space and either on the wall or in different cases throughout and that's kind of the the epicenter of this experience though that's why you call it the insect asylum because you have insects alive and not alive yeah, on display crazy about bugs crazy about bugs <laughs> And yep. We also make the joke that since they are um, procured in such a way, uh, they come here, but they never leave because any time that we absorb an entomologist collection in our vintage section, um, we guarantee that we will never sell them and we'll never farm them out. It's anything that is donated or uh, put directly into the collection for those purposes, stay here forever. And this is your life's work. This is your passion. And you've opened up just here in May to the public for the first time. And all this stuff was sitting in an apartment for years, going, getting it to this spot here. But this is something you started way back on the East Coast. You were mentioning that you were in Maine for a time where you were the kid in the dirt, playing with the bugs and the mud and everything else, right? Absolutely. I was definitely the weird kid. Um, I grew up in a log cabin in the woods. And even though it was a very small, small farm town, I was still just the one that did all the crazy animal sciences. I was the kid that was getting uh, yelled at by teachers because I was walking ants out of the classroom and back out into the backyard where they belonged. So. And you also have spaces upstairs and both down here, but upstairs it's a it's an educational space where you have things on display. You use a certain word that I can't remember. Tangibles. Tangibles. Explain what that is. Um, so tangibles are just uh, specific items that I've put aside for people to pick up, hold. Um, also throughout the exhibit space down here, anything with a green dot you can touch, you can hold, you can smell, you know, whatever you want. I. I didn't want to create a space where parents were like, put your hands in your pockets, kids, because I was not a kid that could put my hands in my pockets. I'm autistic um, and I am curious. And so I wanted to create a space that has curiosity and whimsy in mind and gives you the flexibility to actually experience these things the way you want to experience them. So um, our tangibles are just a rotating stock of different items that I've set aside for people to explore um, and sit down and research, study, talk about, um, hold in their hands and just really appreciate. And you have these old school uh, machinery upstairs where you, what was the one upstairs that you were showing me that so I can't- There's a micro slide machine up there. <laughs> um, I've got old projectors, I've got old cameras, um, mm, all kinds of good stuff. I know I was talking to you and I meant this as a compliment. And I mean it as well as a compliment. It feels like I'm in like the spot where Indiana Jones's office was. <laughs> That's what it feels like because you have everything in here was at one point alive or is alive. What you have some of the insects upstairs. We were looking at the uh, what was the cockroach, the property? Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Right. And uh, despite what many people might believe, they're actually very friendly, very nice. Right. 
They're quite lovely. Yeah. We're trying to change the stigma around sure. things. So just because something is different or has um, an uncomfortable um, presence to it doesn't make it bad in any way. It just means that we need to educate ourselves more mm -hmm. on um, all the beautiful and wonderful things about our world. And you have a lot of the beautiful, wonderful things of the world all over the walls in here. You have artists that have done insect inspired or animal inspired or just mystic inspired artwork on the walls which again this is a place that i have never really seen in chicago you've really done something here where it's just a little bit of everything where you have art galleries kind of strewn throughout with all these other exhibits that could be taken as art as well when you have the display cases of the beetles and everything else in here and the stingray as well talk about that so the Jenny Hanover Stingray is one of the oldest mermaids in the world. Um, and uh, essentially the Fijian tribes used to make them um, to ward off demons and dragons and bad spirits. And then in Amsterdam, the sailors found out about it, so they started replicating it as well. The earliest known Jenny Hanover was recorded in 1558. Um, and then the Japanese also started adopting the tradition and they started putting them in their temples um, as omens for wealth, prosperity, um, again, to, to push out the negativity and bring in the positivity, so. And that's the overwhelming, oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so, so we have our own, um, it was really funny. There's a, a museum called the Zyglomorphic Museum in Portland, Oregon, and I flew all the way there to see their Jenny Hanover's because I just wanted to see one in real life. And I said, one day, I will own one of those myself. And that was in 2018. And in 2020, I acquired my Jenny Hanover. That's incredible. And it, this space is a very welcoming space. You were talking about bringing light to the world. And that's what this is. Figuratively, figuratively and literally got skylights coming in. But these, the exhibits you have in here are just wonderful where you just have all these different walks of life coming together. And that's the experience that people can expect when they come here. Um, what days are you open? Uh, Wednesday through Sunday and then Monday Tuesday are available for private bookings um, our schedule is a little bit different um, so I encourage everybody to go on our website and check out our hours and operations page because um, Wednesday mornings are sectioned off for field trips homeschool groups um, things of that sort so that way kids are coming in here with their their teachers and instructors without the general public um, oh, cool. And then Wednesday evenings are our community nights, so it's our discounted night. Um, and anybody can come in and reserve the upstairs space. Mm -hmm. And when they reserve the upstairs space, um, they can teach a class or they can have an art exhibit. They can do a book signing. They can do a painting thing. They can have a card game night, um, music, anything that you want to do, as long as it's respectful to everyone that space is for you. It's dedicated to you on Wednesdays. And then on top of that, um, we have Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, which is our general standard days where we will be having all kinds of projects happening throughout the course of the day, pinning demos. Um, anybody can come in and um, take part in some of our activities. If somebody wants to dissect owl pellets, they can do so for $10 material supply charge. That's the only activity that we have on a constant basis that does have a supply charge. Mm -hmm. Everything else um, that is activity-wise is complimentary. Um, and these activities can be throughout. When people walk in, buy a price of admission to come in. These activities are going on every day. It's not like... A separate thing it, on certain days it is what's going on at, the, at, at yeah. this space I mean we're not calling it a necessary a museum it's more of an educational center am I am I close on that arts or, and education arts and education yeah, yeah yeah it's I mean it's definitely a museum 100,000 percent we're a museum that's what our licensing is so. I, I'm sorry <laughs> but I meant I, what I mean is there's more than just being a museum is what I mean like because oh, you absolutely. offer all these other things yeah like no we wanted to make this a very very hands-on experience like I said I I don't want this to be an in the hands in the pockets kind of place. I want people to be able to learn and grow in their own speed and in their own way and in their own comfortabilities. I want you to try something new. I want you to try to see something new every time you come in because it's going to be constantly changing and evolving and there's so much to look at. You're going to notice different things every time you see in the space. That's incredible. I think that's the most interesting thing out of all of this is that it could be something literally new every day. Different insects up on the walls and everything else and everything in here is you, your private collection that you've collected over the years or people have donated or you purchase yourself. You even offer tea. 
which yeah. is just lovely. <laughs> yeah. everything. We also have an insect library, um, which are um, thousands of specimens for sale. So if people want to come in and purchase insects, you now have a local space to do so. Um, if I don't have an insect that you're interested in, we can always pre-order your insects from some of our suppliers. Um, other things we have is a free plant library that is from the green light district they are sponsoring the, the plant library so you can take a plant or leave a plant it's one plant per human um, and that's a constant basis as well um, and so we partner with a lot of different organizations and groups throughout the community to be able to bring in lots of fun things for people to experience and enjoy we're going to be doing a monthly open mic night for um, people that want to use hand musician like hand instruments mm -hmm. like hand drums rattles um you want to bring a flute or was i don't know i don't know what it is that you like to do <laughs> but um we're going to be planning once a night um once a month um we have a, a resident guitarist elephant architecture who will be coming in and leading the session and um so that's that's a thing um, we're going to be doing a lot of live animal education with scales and tails traveling zoo they'll be coming in oh, at least cool. once a month as well um, so we'll be bringing all different kinds of species in here. Um, we'll be doing live painting courses and everything. Um, you got everything going yeah. on here. What's the uh, website again for people to check out all this information there? www.theinsectasylum.com. That is T H E I N S E C T A S Y L U M.com. And, um, so our activities are, um, included in your, um, ticketing cost. And then our classes will be a separate charge. Mm -hmm. However, if you purchase a class, you get free entrance to the museum. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So it's, you can spend a long time here really learning things. You could always dig for some worms. That's something that's every day. <laughs> Enjoy some music and some tea. And what was the name of the uh, giraffe, the neighborhood uh, name? So the community decided to name the giraffe Long John. And right. so we let everybody write down names for a month straight. We picked all the names up, put them in a spreadsheet. We chose the ones that were most popular, and then we put it to a vote on the Internet. And so... Um, he got the name Long John. Fantastic. Well, Nina, thank you very much. I appreciate you letting me walk around the space and you taking the time to show me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for taking interest in my small business. Absolutely. And this is Long John right here. You want to come check him out, you can do so now. Chicago scene is T-B-A-R-N-A-S at WGNTV.com if you have suggestion for it. Or head over to WGNTV.com slash Chicago scene. That's T-Barnas at WGNTV.com. We'll see you guys later. Say hi.